good morning so let's continue uh, with our problem like we we had we had stated a problem last time if you remember okay the is a spherical particle that we have and uh, there is some data given okay about a concentration so the diameter of the particle is 2 into 10 raise to minus 3 centimeters okay and uh, the external concentration cas is equal to 0 0.001 moles per dm cube right then it is said that uh, the diffusion coefficient or effective diffusivity is 0 0.1 centimeters per second the data given and moreover it is like also given that at halfway distance that is r is equal to capital r by 2 right the concentration is or ca by cas is equal to 0 0.1 right so from this they have asked what would be the concentration when r is equal to point r by capital r is equal to 0 0.7 or in other words if the distance is point uh, what point 3 into 10 raise to minus 3 centimeters from the external surface the radius is the radius is 1 into 10 raise to minus 3 okay so point 3 so remaining would be point 7 so r by capital r is point 7 so what is ca by cas and we've solved this problem and we arrived at the answer ca is equal to 2.36 into 10 raise to minus 4 how did we do that because we know the concentration relation for the concentration profile okay we know the relation for the concentration profile that is ca by cas which is denoted as psi is equal to 1 by lambda right sin h lambda into phi phi that is thiele modulus sin h phi okay so from the given data we can calculate phi which came out to be 6 and then again we substituted for the distance lambda dimensionless distance and we calculated ca so ca was equal to or ca was equal to 2.36 2 into 10 raise to minus 4 okay so that's a quick revision of what we have learned last time now the next part of this problem is that what should be the diameter Okay, try to understand this. What should be diameter so that eta, that is effectiveness factor, is 0 0.8? Okay, so it's very. So let's try and learn from this. Okay, just solving a numerical problem is one one thing. Okay, but at the same time, let's understand what they're trying to say. We can manipulate the diameter of the particle and get the effectiveness factor that we want. What is the importance of effectiveness factor? Effectiveness factor is going to decide a rate because actual rate is nothing but the effectiveness factor into the intrinsic rate. Okay. Now, if the effectiveness factor is close to 1, that means there is no pore diffusion resistance. So, I can manipulate, I can design the catalyst particle, have a catalyst particle size in such a way that the diffusion resistance is negligible. Okay. That means effectiveness factor is close to 1. In this case, they are asking, no, no, do not go for 1, that will be too much. I will tell you why. Okay. But then, point 0.8 is good enough. Okay. Let us see what happens. But before that, we need to understand okay, what, what is the effectiveness factor otherwise, like for the given diameter. Okay. For the given diameter, what is the effectiveness factor? If the effectiveness factor is already 0.9 or 0.95, then there is no point in bringing it down. Okay. Anyway, they have asked it, then we have to solve it. All right. But it is quite likely that the effectiveness factor is much lower compared to 0 0.8 and that is why we need to play with the diameter. Okay. So, in the first part of the question, we just looked at the concentration right? from the concentration profile. We calculated the Thiele modulus, okay. but let us try and understand what is the effectiveness factor in the first part itself and then we will see. Okay, how to manipulate or how to get a value of effectiveness factor to be 0 0.8 so that there should be a required diameter for it. All right, fine. So, what is the effectiveness factor in the earlier case when the diameter is 2 into 10 to minus 3 uh, 
3 centimeters which is given rather ok. So, d p is 2 into 10 is to minus 3 centimeter this is earlier case phi is 6. So, eta is equal to 3 divided by phi 1 square phi 1 cot h phi minus phi 1 minus 1. We know this ok. We know this. Now, if you substitute phi 1 is equal to 6 here ok. You are going to get a value which is much less than 0 0.8 you can verify that ok. It would be of the order of, order of 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 ok. That low I have not calculated it, but you can you can you can do it yourself or it can be somewhere close to this range right. Now, this value is lower. So, the rate is lower, but I am not happy with this rate. Look at a particle diameter 2 into 10 to minus 3 centimeters right 2 into 10 to 1 centimeter is this much ok 2 into 10 to minus 3 ok 0 0.1 centimeter is 1 millimeter. So, this is going to be less than millimeter small it looks like powder. Okay, but still the effectiveness factor is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 which is something that I am not happy with. Okay. So, I need to play with the particle diameter can I play with the diffusivity now I have prepared a catalyst okay. diffusivity depends on the pore diameter it depends on the porosity it depends on the tortuosity it depends on the constriction factor remember. So, with this now I can play with that okay. I have prepared a catalyst. Now, only thing that I can play with is a diameter I can grind that catalyst I can grind that catalyst ok, but I cannot change the internal morphology. So, diffusion coefficient cannot be changed the only thing that I, I can change and get higher effectiveness factor is the diameter ok. Always remember that okay. diameter is something that you can quickly play with right I can always grind a catalyst if I want to reduce the value of uh, diffusion resistance or increase the value of effectiveness factor that is what we are learning through this problem ok. It would not take much time to numerically solve this problem, but I am trying to convey ok like uh, what is the meaning behind all this ok that is more important all right. Now, if I want to take this value of effectiveness factor to 0 0.8 this is d p I need to vary ok fine. So, in order to vary d p what do I need to do? First of all, the, what is phi? Phi is r root k 1 rho c s a divided by d e. I do not need to buy hat this equation, no? I know the proportionality like if you increase r the resistance is going to increase. If I increase diffusivity resistance is going to decrease ok and relatively if I increase the value of intrinsic rate constant again the diffusion is going to be important ok diffusion resistance is going to be important. So, that is how I remember this equation and what is this numerator numerator is numerator is nothing but the rate constant per unit volume ok it is per unit volume we already looked at that right. So, this is nothing but a rate constant let us not get into details this is the rate constant fine. Now, let me just denote this as r k 1 v divided by d e ok why v because per unit volume the numerator. What do I know in all this 6 is equal to 1 into 10 raise to minus 3 k 1 v divided by the diffusivity or diffusion coefficient that is 0 0.1. So, I get an intrinsic rate constant, I get an intrinsic rate constant which is 3 6 0 0 0 0 0 ok. You can do this numerical calculation and check ok. What, what would be the unit? It is a first order reaction unit is per unit volume ok is a volumetric rate constant. So, it is going to be second inverse we already seen that. So, I have determined the value of intrinsic rate constant which is not going to change this value of rate constant is not going to change even if I change diameter ok. 
So, if I want higher values of effectiveness factor, I am going to change the diameter, but the rate constant is going to remain same. Remember that. Okay? Fine. So, let us go ahead. Now, I want effectiveness factor to be 0 0.8, which is nothing but 3 by 5 1 square 5 1, right? Cot h phi 1 minus 1. So, for 0 0.8 phi 1 becomes it is going to be less or more? It is going to be less. Why? Because the effectiveness factor has increased, the phi 1 value is going to go down. Okay? Right? So, phi 1 becomes 2, just take that. Okay? When, I, when I substitute, when I do trial and error, just assume the value of phi 1, get this, see whether it is equal to 0 0.8 or not. If it is not, then go on change the value of phi 1, it is a trial and error method okay? and get a value of phi 1. Now, with this value of phi 1, now again I go back to the expression for phi 1 is equal, phi 1 is equal to r root of k v divided by d e. What is that I do not know in this? Of course, this is a new value of phi 1. Okay? Earlier it was 6, so I, I say phi n new value. Okay? So, I will have a new r. These two are not going to change because d depends on the catalyst morphology, pore diameter and inside structure and this is again something to do with the intrinsic rate constant, okay, which may have adsorption, desorption also like what you have seen before. So, these two that is k v and d e are not going to change. Okay. Only r is going to change such that I have a new value of phi 1. Okay. So, for the new value of phi 1, if I substitute for k v, d e and all, okay, this is not r raised to n, huh? this is a new, new r, okay. just do not get confused. This is superscript and not the index. Okay. So, the new value of r, if I substitute for phi and k v that I have calculated 36 whatever, 1000 or lakh or whatever. Okay and diffusivity, I am going to get R is equal to 3.4 into 10 raise to minus 4 centimeter, which says d p is equal to 6.8 into 10 raise to minus 4 centimeter. So, this is my answer. So, what is happening? Look at this diameter and the one that was given earlier. Okay. The, the, the diameter given was 2 into 10 raise to minus 3. 2 into 10 raise to minus 3. Now, the diameter that I have calculated is 6 into 10 raise to minus 4. So, diameter has gone down further okay? and that is the reason I am able to increase the effectiveness factor. So, that is the meaning of it. Okay? So, I am playing with the diameter to increase the effectiveness factor. In general, if I just do a reaction at different diameters and calculate a rate for a given concentration, then the graph is going to be like this in general. Huh? I am not talking about this. Now, the problem is solved. Okay? Now, I am talking about a general case, a diameter of the catalyst particle and a rate at a given concentration. So, say initial rate or in inlet rate. You know how to measure this rate. So, I am doing experiments in laboratory. Say, I am using a differential reactor. I am probably using a spinning basket reactor. Okay? We already spent some time discussing what is spinning basket reactor. I may be doing experiment in a slurry reactor okay, and calculating the rates at given concentrations throughout okay, and just changing the particle diameter. Okay. And if I if so what kind of behavior I expect here? You plot it on log log or, or possibly, okay. What will I get a get a what kind of relation will I get? This relation is going to be quite similar to the relationship between eta and phi. Okay. Why? Because the diameter has something to do with the phi and the rate observed has something to do with the value of eta. So, the relation is going to be like this. So, at lower diameter, you are free of internal mass transfer, sorry, diffusion resistances. Okay. So, I get maximum rate and as I go on increasing the diameter, the molecules have to travel or diffuse over a long distance, long path 
okay because of which the rate is going to go down the resistance would increase okay that's why it's going down that is the meaning of it so if somebody does experiment and gives you the data like this okay you should know the meaning of that and of course remember all the, this rate is for a given concentration and this is what i have observed for different diameters you're not changing anything else only the diameter in that case i see something like this means definitely there is a possibility that diffusion resistance is playing an important role okay i am i'm using a word possibility okay now what is that which why will the rate get affected because change because of change in diameter here you know the reason okay but is that the only reason if i change the diameter and the overall rate is changing is there any other possibility now what have we looked at so far adsorption chemical surface reaction desorption and internal diffusion okay of reactant and product apart from that there is something else okay that will play an important role in the overall rate or govern the overall rate possibly we already mentioned about it but not discussed so far in detail is the external mass transfer resistance okay external mass transfer resistance which has nothing to do with the particle morphology nothing to do with the pore diameter which has nothing to do with the internal structure of the particle okay it depends on something that happens at the exterior surface and in the bulk okay so we'll see that in detail now okay but then before that just remember okay probably i have not stated it explicitly that i am talking about this rate constant every time intrinsic rate constant say here or wherever i have used the expression k c a and all that k here i have just used it say for first order reaction r a is equal to minus k c a or if for nth order reaction it can be c a raised to n now this k or this expression i have used it for as a normal rate equation but sometimes it can be complicated or in the sense it can have something in the denominator as well okay why that will take care of the adsorption term that will take care of the langmuir hinshel wood mechanism ile radial mechanism okay so i have not considered it deliberately because then our derivations would become difficult and then the interpretation is a problem so i have considered a very simple case where the rate is given by kca and that happens okay even if you have langmuir hinshel adsorption uh, predominant there when does that happen i have told you like if you have very high temperature if you have very high temperature then the adsorption is insignificant so the denominator becomes one okay and then the expression boils down to a form of a normal rate expression that is r is equal to minus r a is equal to minus k c a raised to n so always remember that whatever analysis we have done here is by considering a simple equation but there is a possibility that you may have adsorption constants desorption constants of the species involved okay in this particular expression if we really want to get uh, very close to reality okay right now the purpose is to understand it so that's the reason we have used a very simple equation okay all right okay so there are so many problems in the assignment sheets or even at the end of textbooks like fogler levenspiel and all you should attempt and solve this problem this is where we are closing this chapter of internal diffusion but anyway we will be referring to that because it's not that like one studied and then uh, forgotten because it will come again and again later in our discussion whenever we try and design a reactor okay all right so we'll talk about external mass transfer now it's a different phenomena or other the step than reaction adsorption desorption and internal diffusion what is happening external as the name says external mass transfer okay so you have a particle you have a particle and a fluid is flowing over it this is a catalyst particle okay 
Now, what, what is likely to happen at the external surface of the particle? Your fluid dynamics knowledge, okay, transport phenomena tells you that is a boundary layer here. There is a boundary layer, slightly non-spherical in nature because of flow patterns. Here it is slightly thicker compared to, of course, this can be equal here, whatever. Okay. Now, how do you define a boundary layer? How do I define a boundary layer? I define a boundary layer is the thickness of a layer in which the velocity is changing. Okay. The velocity here near the solid surface is ideally 0, there is no slip right? and the velocity would go on increasing and will become almost equal to the velocity of the bulk at that point okay? and, that velocity and that particular thickness at which it becomes a say 99 percent of the external because getting it exactly equal will be a problem. Okay. So, getting 99 percent equal, okay, what is the length? Okay. That is the length or thickness of the boundary condition. We define it for momentum balance, momentum transfer right? based on the velocity. Now, there is another boundary layer for mass transfer. So, similar like your, your velocity is changing here. right? In the case of component concentrations, there will be a concentration changing here. Why is it happening? Because this layer is a stagnant or close to a stagnant layer. Okay. That is why the concentration will change. The concentration here may not be same as concentration here and that has great implications on the reaction rate. Okay. So far, we have been assuming that the concentration at the exterior or external surface okay, of the particle is same as the concentration in the bulk. C A B is equal to C A S. Right? So far, we have not really looked at a difference between these two. But now, we are going to look at a possibility that there is a resistance offered by the external surface, the boundary layer is thick enough, so that the concentrations are different. C A B is not same as C A S, C A B is bulk concentration, C A S is the surface concentration. Okay. This is because of the resistance offered by that boundary layer. Okay. So, the concentration is going to increase. So, typical profile in the boundary layer of the concentration is this. Okay. This is a concentration boundary layer. Earlier, I mentioned about the velocity boundary layer, okay. momentum balance. Right? Now, I am talking about the concentration boundary layer. Okay. Now, let us make certain assumptions and try and quantify the resistance. Okay. Now, this boundary layer thickness is not very large, okay. in fact it is very very small compared to the particle diameter most of the times. Okay. Right. And this boundary layer, if you look, look at a particle, particle is very big okay, and I have a boundary layer, small boundary layer around it. So, at any given point the curvature can be neglected as far as this boundary layer is concerned. So, I can say that I have a particle okay, and there is a boundary layer. Now, it is quite possible that you have something like this, the curvature will start. So, this is this is surface, I can assume at a given point, I can assume it to be flat and this is a boundary layer, this is a boundary layer. Now, there is an assumption that okay, this boundary layer is stagnant enough and whatever resistance offered by the entire, this is where you have bulk right? and this is where you have solid. So, whatever resistance on this side okay, for the mass transfer to take place is offered by this bulk, the conditions here may be velocity, whatever, okay, the null number and all that. So, that particular condition is going to offer certain resistance okay, and that resistance we are going to assume that that is concentrated in this boundary itself. or it is called as film. Okay. So, all the resistance is, is concentrated in the film. This is a very hypothetical case okay, that I have a film that takes care of all the resistance. So, in terms of a concentration profile, now it looks quite, it, it becomes very easy for, our, for the analysis. Okay. You have a film, in this the concentration is going to change. 
how it is going to change we will see, but there is one concentration here and there is one concentration here. Now, for a reaction to take place say A is going to B. So, A is sitting here in the bulk, now A is going to diffuse through this film and go here and B is going to come out. Of course, inside you have pore diffusion, adsorption, desorption that is occurring and then B is coming out. So, if A has to transfer from bulk to here, the profile has to be like this okay. and for B it would be other way around. So, let us consider a reaction A going to B. All right. Let us consider a reaction A going to B. There is a reason why we are considering this reaction as a first step. Okay. If you have non equimolar reaction, you have some different things to be considered, but let us now talk about a simple single uh, reaction which is isomerization reaction, equimolar reaction A going to B. Okay. So, A has to diffuse through this layer and go there to the surface. Inside, we already seen what is happening once it is here. Okay. This is your C A S this is your C A S and this is C A B. Right. Now, I need to know the concentration profile inside. What is the nature of this concentration profile? Okay. Whether it will be a straight, whether it will be linear, non-linear. So, let us let us try and look at this. And it is simple, we already done this type of exercise for intraparticle diffusion. Okay. So, let me consider a differential element like what I did before also, but now it is going to be relatively easy because I do not have spherical coordinates, I am working in Cartesian coordinates. Okay. So, this is at x is equal to 0 and this is at x is equal to say delta. So, delta is the thickness of the film. So, this is x plus d x and this is x right? and diffusion is going to take place in this direction, okay? this direction for A for B it would be opposite. Now, can we write equations here for the for the flux? So, flux at x, okay, flux at x say d A minus d C A by d x at x minus, okay, minus d C A by d x at x plus d x right flux here minus flux here by minus sign because d C A by d x is negative flux has to be positive. Okay. So, flux here minus flux here is equal to what? Earlier what did we do in the case of interparticle diffusion? It, there was some reaction that was occurring here. So, coming in minus going out plus, is e, plus reacted is equal to 0, right? but now we have coming in going out sorry going out coming in there is no reaction, reaction is taking place here and not here, okay? it is only non reactive mass transfer that is taking place. So, right? And now, if you simplify this for d x going to 0, you what you get is a very simple equa equation a second order differential equation, which has a solution and now you will determine a and b by applying proper boundary conditions. What are the boundary conditions? x is equal to 0, C A is equal to C A S, x is equal to delta, C A is equal to C A B. Right? So, determine the value of A and B. First of all, use this boundary condition x is equal to 0, C A is equal to C S. So, B, so that implies B is equal to C A S. So, so let us calculate the value of A. So, C A minus C A S is equal to A X. For X is equal to delta, C A is equal to C A B. So, C A B minus C A S by delta is equal to A. And if you substitute now, now this A and B, if you substitute here, okay, what I get is 
C A minus C A S divided by C A B minus C A S is equal to x by delta. So, what does it say? It is a linear profile inside, it is a linear profile inside okay? and we know the boundary conditions and this is a delta, the slope is known. right? So, it is a linear concentration profile that makes my exercise quite easy. Okay? So, it is you have C A B C A S right. Why I am doing all this? Because I want to get a rate, I want to get a flux. See mass transfer and diffusion, if I want to get an overall rate, I have to go through the flux equation. Flux multiplied by a cross sectional area is going to give me the rate. Okay? For reaction, we already know okay, R is equal to K C A and all that, that is the rate, but that depends on the unit of K, whether it is per unit volume, per unit area and all that. There are so many possible units. Okay. So, be careful about units uh, every time, all right. Flux is equal to D A, right. I am not using effective diffusivity here, right? this is a normal diffusivity in the bulk. Okay? Diffusivity into d c a by d x. This is going to be linear. So, substitute for this. So, this is going to be so this is going to be d a by delta, right into C A B minus C A S. Right, no? Delta X is equal to delta, right? And delta C A equal to C A B minus C A X. Linear. So, this is a flux. What is the unit? Moles or kilo moles per meter square second. per unit cross sectional area, area for flux. Which area are we talking about by the way? We have talked about area before also in intra particle diffusion, but do not confuse that area with this area. Not the area inside, it is the area here, which is almost equal to the external surface area for the mass transfer to take place. So, this is that area cross section or other a cross section area for the flux flux. Okay. So, here the, that area is nothing but the particle external surface area because that is where the mass transfer is occurring. Okay. But let us keep the same units right now okay, and go ahead. All right. So, before we go ahead, now this flux is equal to normally it is denoted by J A, okay. is denoted by J A. There is one important assumption that we have made, uh, not assumption rather, we have uh, right, we call this an assumption because we say that this is A going to B reaction, that means it is an equimolar reaction, okay. it is an equimolar reaction, that is why we have written the equation for flux as flux as j a is equal to d a d c a by d x. This is fine, okay. but we have equated it equal to w a. Normally, this happens when you have there are many situations possible. Now, you have a surface on which a is going Okay. There is a reaction that is taking place, B is formed, so B is diffusing back. What is a net flow? It is equimolar reaction, so molar flux, the net molar flux 
net molar flux is 0 here, very important because how much you are going in same amount is coming out in terms of moles, right. That is why this is equal to this, very important you might have learned that in basic theory of mass transfer, okay. W A is equal to J A, otherwise W A is equal to J A plus plus what? Y A the mole fraction W A plus W B plus whatever total. So, this net flux if it is going to be significant or finite then W A is not equal to J A, but in this particular case for equimolar reaction A going to B right. This net flux there will be signs for this plus minus whatever and then there are no other components W A becomes equal to W B, but with negative sign. So, this becomes 0 and that is why I have W A is equal to J A. This is very important again I want to avoid complications that is why I am considering A going to B reaction. Okay. But once you understand this well, it would be easy for you to rather extend it further for more complicated cases. Here idea is to rather how to incorporate external mass transfer resistance, how to show the importance of external mass transfer resistance in the overall rate equation. Okay. So, that is the main motivation that is why we are considering a very simple reaction. Okay. This will happen W A equal to J A will happen for other cases also. Even if the net flux is finite, even if the net flux is finite, if the y a is 0, so you have a very dilute solution, then I can neglect this. Okay. Right. So, w a is equal to j a happens in the case of equimolar reactions, it happens in the case of dilute solutions as well. Okay. But otherwise for non-equimolar reactions or Suppose your medium is stagnant, otherwise, okay, no equimolar diffusion that is taking, it is only mass transfer, say, no reaction that taking place. In that case, we, we have to be careful, okay. Always remember that. Fine. So, let us go ahead. We have J A or W A is equal to J A is equal to D A by delta C A B minus C A S. constant in the bulk. The concentration varies only in the film, hypothetical film, a stagnant film, okay, that is what we assume. Okay. Now, this particular parameter d a by delta is called as mass transfer coefficient k c, let us denote it as k c. All right. So, W A is equal to K C into C A B minus C A S, again this is flux moles per meter square second and this is called as mass transfer coefficient. You have you already learned this probably, okay. mass transfer coefficient depends on diffusivity, bulk diffusivity and delta, fin thickness. So, let us spend some time understanding what is this film thickness and all. Okay. This is the film thickness, right. Now, this film thickness depends on which factors, this depends on what is the condition here. Okay. If you have intense agitation, the boundary layer thickness will go down, the value of delta is going to go down, the thickness is film thickness is going to go down, intense agitation. Okay. It depends on the properties also, say viscosity, density and diffusivity as well. Okay. So, we will talk about the correlations for calculating K C later. Okay. Let us first complete our analysis when the reaction is taking place, how to incorporate the effect of K C. Okay. Right. How to calculate K C, we will see later. Or
look at the correlations and all later, but right now let us try and put this in our rate equation in the overall perspective okay, where you have so many things happening right fine. I have a catalyst particle, there is a resistance here, I am not going to neglect it now like what I did before okay. and A is going here. Once it reaches here, what is the rate? The rate is given by eta into intrinsic rate. Okay. Once it reaches here, but before it reaches here, it is experiencing some resistance. So, these two are again the steps taking place in series okay. and relative importance is going to decide okay, which is the governing step, which is the rate determining step and all again the same logic. Fine. So, let us assume that eta is equal to 1. Let us assume that eta is equal to 1. Again, making, but we can always incorporate the effect of eta later is not a big thing, okay? just multiply it to the rate. Okay? And I say adsorption and desorption, they are not really important or probably that we are doing it at very high temperature, entire surface is available for reaction, most of the sides are vacant. In that case, what I say is R is equal to say k now I am using k r I will I will tell you why I am using k r here into C a again a first order reaction r a is equal to minus k r C a. Now I want to bring these two effects together. Okay. So, this is a reaction when this goes inside. So, that is why it is expressed for the concentration at the surface that is C a s. Why? C s is going to be same everywhere. Why? Because the eta is 1. So, whenever the reaction is taking place, it is at C a s concentration inside a particle. Now, this C a s is not same as C a b and we are going to incorporate the effect of external mass transfer. Okay? So, this is when the component reaches the external surface. Okay. Now, what is the unit of this? This this can have many units. Okay, so one unit would be the normal rate that we use it is per unit volume of the particle, provided this is per unit volume. This can be per unit surface area provided by the particle. Okay, everywhere. Then in that case, this is per unit surface area. Okay. This can be this can be per unit weight of the catalyst. So, this would be per unit weight of the catalyst. Now, we are de defining one more ex uh, unit. This is per unit area, but not the internal area, per unit external area, external surface area, moles per meter square per second, which is same as the unit is same as the external mass number. So, that I can marry these two things, okay. They are they are on the same platform, right. So, this is this unit is moles per meter square per second, this is external surface area do not confuse this area with the internal area S A that we have used before. So, this is S A, but it has nothing to do with this, this is the external surface area which is for a spherical particle it is pi d p square. Okay, right? So, now this rate is expressed in the same unit as that of mass transfer flux. Okay. That is why I am using k r here. So, k r is defined as the rate constant per unit external surface area. For that I need to know the shape of the catalyst, I am assuming it to be spherical here, okay. external surface area. So, that I can now bring this on the same platform as that of the external mass transfer. Okay. Now, at steady state, at steady state r is equal to or say I will now r a is nothing but w a now, because I am talking about a flux here per unit external surface area okay, is equal to minus k r c a s and is equal to what? minus k c right c 
CA surface minus CAB. Oh, sorry, it should be other way around. Should be B here and surface here. Both are negative negative, the magnitudes would be equal. So, what I get here is K R C A S is equal to K C C A B minus C A S. Look at this, these two are equal now, right. Now, I, I get these, why, why, why they are equal? Because there is no accumulation at the external surface. See, at the surface, surface is two dimensional, accumulation is 0. Okay? So, so, whatever going to the surface is leaving the surface. Okay? How much ever is going to the surface and is same as that is, there is no accumulation there, there is no source term at the surface, there is no sink term at the surface. Okay. So, that is why is the surface whatever is going external surface whatever is by mass transfer is getting reacted. Okay. So, both are equal that is the meaning of this. Why we are equating now? Because mathematically we want to go further and get a simpler rate equation in terms of the external or bulk concentration because it is the bulk concentration that I am going to deal with as far as the reactor design is concerned. Can I, surf, can I measure the surface concentration? Can I sit on the external surface and measure it? No, I am aware of the bulk concentration only. Okay. So, my rate equation, the overall rate equation should be in terms of the bulk concentration. Again, the same logic, what did we do for intra particle case? There again, the internal concentrations, I did not know them, or rather, I cannot measure them, rather. That is why I have finally got the expression for the in terms of the external concentration at external surface. Similarly, for adsorption desorption, do I know the concentration of the adsorbed species? I do not know the concentration, do not know in the sense I cannot measure them. Okay. So, I always express them in terms of the bulk concentration, the same logic here. Okay. So, at the external surface, I cannot measure the concentration. And since I know that this external surface concentration is not same as the bulk concentration, I need to do this. I need to express this external surface concentration in terms of bulk concentration. Okay. Right. So, let us go ahead. From this, what I get is C A S is equal to K C C A B divided by K C plus K R, K C plus K R. Okay. So, I got expression for C A S. Now, I go ahead and substitute for C A S in the rate equation R A is equal to minus K R C A S is equal to K C K R. C A B divided by K R plus K C. And what is the unit here? Again, do not forget moles per meters per second, meter square per second, and which is same as W A. So, this is my rate equation. This is my rate equation. Look at this rate equation. This is again something similar to what we have got for adsorption, desorption case. Of course, the expression does not look similar. But the procedure is quite similar that I eliminated the concentration at the interface, at the external surface, okay, and I have got this final expression, which is in terms of bulk concentration, I am able to measure this. So, again, similar to what we discussed before as well. Now, if I have a CSTR, I want to design a CSTR, okay. I am dealing with the bulk concentrations. So, F A minus F sorry F A 0 minus F A plus R A W is equal to 0. And if I convert this into concentrations say and R A is again a function of concentrations. These concentrations are bulk concentrations and that is why I need this expression 
R as a in as a function of C A B and not C A S. Okay, and that is why I have got this equation. Okay, this equation I am going to use this equation in the design. Now look at this equation. There is so much that we can learn from this equation. Relative importance of KC and KR. The smaller one will govern the overall rate. Okay, right? I can I can convert it to this form. R A is equal to C A B divided by one divided by KR, one divided by KC. Same one. So KC KR, I have just taken it down. Now you can see if KC is very large, this becomes zero. Sorry, negative sign. Yeah, KC is very large. This becomes zero. So it it boils down to a normal kinetics. Okay. For KC very large, R A is equal to minus K R C A B. Intrinsic kinetic control. That means which is nothing but C A B is equal to C A S. This situation. No external mass transfer resistance. K C is very large. Diffusion resistance is negligible. Mass transfer coefficient very large. Either diffusivity is very large or delta is very small. Okay. Other way around. K R is very large. Now relatively, uh, is always relative. Large means what? Relative to K C. Okay, K R is very large related to K C. Then R A is equal to minus K C C A B. In that case, what is C A S? C A S is almost negligible. Is zero. Here C A S is equal to C A B, whereas in this case C A S is equal to zero. You can think about it. Okay, we'll continue this discussion in the next lecture. Okay, but this is the meaning of the rate equation. Okay, if K C is very large, then mass transfer resistance is negligible. I can ignore it. Right? If K C is very small compared to K R. Okay. Right. In that case, I have to consider it. Okay, Re reaction becomes instantaneous. Is a is a overall or intrinsic reaction becomes instantaneous. So the overall reaction is controlled or governed by the external mass transfer. Okay, so we will we'll continue this discussion in the next lecture.